Hello, story lovers, and welcome to Once Upon a Time, the podcast for all your story-related needs. I am Sarah McGillray, also known as Starshine Wonder in various places on the internet, and my lovely co-host is... Zach Campbell. I am the wonderful co-host of Once Upon a Time, and I am the founder of Zach Does Things YouTube channel. Such a pleasure for you to be with us here today. I hope you enjoy yourselves. And today we're going to look at our first episode, which is called What is Story? Thank you very much, Zach. Well, let's get started. What is a story? According to the dictionary definition on dictionary.com, because the internet is fantastic and these kinds of things, according to this, a story or stories is a narrative, either true or fictitious, in prose or verse, designed to interest, amuse, or instruct the hearer or reader, also known as a tale. One thing I found out that's kind of interesting about the word tale, if you go and have a look at the definition of um, a tale, one of the things that it talks about um, is the fact that a tale can be a falsehood or I know I've read person, <clears throat> excuse me, um, the I know I've read personally don't necessarily feel like a lie and more something of the author's own creation. Yeah, I, yeah, I agree. I mean, a uh, tale is more of um, like a legend or a myth from, say, like Merlin and Arthur, Sword in the Stone, uh, mm. whereas a story is more of a fictitious telling of uh, real-life accounts or things that have been over-exaggerated to prove a point. I suppose. Here's the thing, though. Not all stories are fictitious. Um, one of the things we'll discuss at, um, at, another, uh, at another point, um, eventually, um, hopefully will be the fact that stories, yes, stories can be fictitious. You can have amazingly fantastic, wonderful, imaginative stories that take place in faraway lands. And yet, you also have new stories, and which are equally stories, but they're true. Although I did, I seem to vaguely remember seeing a... Um, about... Hold on. Um, a recent video about the fact that true stories, the element that has um, um, something that is the fact that the person says it's true, whether it's actually true or not, doesn't actually count, which I find rather interesting. But that's on the um, off on the tangent. Yeah. <clears throat> Excuse me. Ooh, um. But, excuse me, one, um, one of the other things that um, we look, um, one of the things that I mentioned in the definition was that a story is a narrative uh, as such. And if you go and have a look at the, def I know we're going very much into like definition, all good it's all good i've just brought it up now a narrative i am here yeah okay that's fine <laughs> um um one of the, um one of the things that it says about narrative is a story or account of events experiences all the like either true or fictitious so Okay, here's the question I'm going to ask. Okay. Does that mean that story that all stories 
have to be fixed. Um, from the fact that it says that narrative is a story and the story says it's a narrative, mm -hmm. effectively, does that mean they're effectively one and the same thing? Or is there a difference? Um, I mean, I, I want to say there's a difference, to be fair, because fictitious, I mean, you can go wildly off. You can make far off lands. You can make races up with, uh, and you can make anything up in a fictitious story. True stories, on the other hand, are solely based in the real world and based on either true events or events that could possibly happen on a day-to-day -day basis. Whereas in a fictitious area of writing, it's not possible for it to happen or that it actually did happen. So... Um, hmm. To me, I, I think that there's a, there's a very fine line between the true and the fictitious in the sense that it just depends on how well someone uses their imagination to get the point across on what they're writing. You make an interesting point there. Um, hmm. Bear with me a minute, sorry. Um... No, sorry. Okay. Um, here's an interesting question. At what point does a story go... Um, say, for example, you hear a story of, say, someone being miraculously healed or you hear a story of people i know that i'm going biblical here but um people being able to walk on water to get out to other um to somebody to rescue them yeah. or somebody being and please know i recently heard this but um somebody being able to translate from french to english on a plane um um to get the per um, the couple upgraded to first class and the person who came to talk to um who the translator who came to talk to them in french they're not being able to understand the translator which is crazy but where do, where do you is it about personal belief as to where you draw the line at, for want of a better word, like supernatural or like downright incredible tales? Yeah, I, I, I think personal belief would would work on that, to be fair. I mean, it, it all depends on how... You know, if you believe in faith, if you believe in, like, the miraculous um, stories that have been heard in Bibles and in church and, you know, in Catholicism and uh, Christianity and things like that. Um, I think it just depends on if you, believe, if you believe in that and your faith is strong compared to someone else's view who isn't as much as much of a faith and much of a faith believer but much more believes in you know hard evidence onto you oh. know these type of things then again it's a fine line and it and to be i think it the way if the way the story is written i think it will come across to different audiences depending on who is reading it whether they be you know believe in faith and they are like heavily invested in in like going to church and are a, a strong follower of jesus and his ways or whoever they you know whoever they you know they they believe in or whatever and then come into someone who doesn't necessarily believe in that who looks at it more of like a scientific point of view um i think the fine line between that again it, it, it's it's hard to distinguish because it the person who believes in faith could look at that and say, yeah, that, that's, that could happen in everyday life. And the person who is more like believes in the facts and scientific proof and things like that. Um, I think 
um, they would need more like more evidence to support that within the the storytelling, so to so to speak. Hmm. I suppose the essence of a story, for me personally, as somebody who is very much an avid reader and a storyteller yeah, and yeah. who loves being able to just wow people and not quite be the centre of attention most of the time. But... <laughs> Come on, we all. Ha I personally think we all have a little bit of that. We kind do, of... we do, we do. That's uh, that's why yeah. I have a YouTube channel, and this is why right. we're starting a podcast. Right, <laughs> which is always great fun. Yay! Exactly. Yay! Podcasts. <laughs> I mean, there is always part of me that I think wants to be in the limelight, but at the same time, it's, it's nice. Still, to kind of scared of it in a sense as well. Uh, uh, yeah. That I completely get, but yeah. as someone who loves to be able to tell stories, so forth, I think for me, there's for me a story and a good story, which is another topic that I'd love to, that um, I think we're going to discuss at some point is one that draws the readers in my the reader or the um, audience's um, kind of attention in and focuses so much on just the and focuses on what they're being told so much that they can see it in front of them. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Uh, when I, everyone, sorry, carry on. No, yeah, I was just going to say I totally agree with that because, you know, everybody's everybody reads differently. They, the yeah everybody <clears throat> excuse me everybody reads between the lines in a different way between me and you you probably read the same story as me completely different to how i would read it uh, it just depends how it comes across to certain people and how other people interpret what the mess what the underlying message is that the author's trying to give i suppose there's definitely something like that. I mean, there are certain stories that you can tell and everybody will get the same thing from. Yeah, For yeah, example, yeah. to use one of the most basic story, well, stories that I know, the cat sat on the mat. Yeah, that, that it's is a It's very story. clear. It's very yeah, clear. The cat sat on the mat. It's an incredibly clear story. There is, uh, there is a per, there's a, there's a noun. Yeah. The cat, or well, a pronoun in this case. Yeah. There is yeah. an action. The cat sat, yeah. and yeah. there is another. Um, there is um, there is an object on which the cat sits. The mat. Yeah. <laughs> yes, and there's nothing in that particular like sentence in that story or anything like that to indicate that there's any kind of that is learning at its most basic oh yeah for sure for sure yeah that is i mean that that in itself is a sentence but in its within the sentence it's a story because it's it's got it's got the pronoun then the 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 object it's got the verb, it's got it all there. I mean, it's set out as a story, whether it be yeah. basic or not. It got to the point straight away, pretty much. Yeah. Um, and it's a really good device for teaching young children to, um, teaching young children to, one of the things that story um one things that i've learned about stories over the years be it myths or legends or romance novels or fantasy or harry potter or any story like that yeah yeah the vast majority of stories will have something to teach us no yeah yeah whether it be about a literate um whether it be about rhyming yeah. Like the 
the cat sat on the mat or whether it be about patience tolerance or whether it's about like deeper things for example one of the things that i found interesting a while back um both myself and zach are harry potter fans yeah true yeah that. very very true <laughs> Harry Potter is awesome, and uh, I know there are people who disagree with me. Feel free to dis uh, disagree on your own time. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but <laughs> one of the things that I hadn't realised until somebody pointed it out to me was that with Harry Potter, basically it taught it has an underlying thing. There's several underlying kind of things that jk rowling talks about yeah for example harry is an author um, harry number one is an author he is if you think about it very carefully he's abused yeah he yeah. is made to sleep in a cupboard under the stairs and he only gets a room when they start sending his hogwarts yeah and yeah. even then and even then, Dern, um, and even then, Dudley kicks up a massive fuss about it. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. And you don't even realise at the time. No, again, that that's the underlying message, yeah. though, isn't it? That an author can project. I mean, it's not the main point of the story. The main point of Harry Potter is that he finds out that he is the key to saving the Wizarding World. But at the same time, he's got his own struggles, not only with that, but living with his his aunt and uncle and his, his cousin, yep. not having any parents to rely on, no friends. Yep. It, it's all well, the kind of things that people go through on an everyday kind of basis. basis. And <clears throat> someone as big and as massively popular as Harry Potter, if people can relate to that, then they're going to feel somewhat involved within the story because in a sense they can relate to it yep and that's a really good thing for writers to be able to do to think about their audience and what kind of story they want to tell yeah yeah yeah, yeah. um one th um that i know that we've slightly we're kind of jumping all over these topics a little bit but yeah um one of the other things that um um it is written down in the notes yes we do actually have notes um is it's not, the like, it's not like we're following them though <laughs> yeah i mean the, the notes are there so that we have a reference point yeah yeah <laughs> but um the uh, um one of the things that um is in here is the ex the telling of an experience being personal or not now you you put this one in and i think that's rather interesting we about because everything one of the things that um i want to do with um, with this podcast eventually yeah, is yeah. being able to invite people um yes we are looking for people to invite onto the show if you want to come on <laughs> not that that's an advert uh, uh, ad advertisement or anything like that this podcast <laughs> is not sponsored but we want you if you like stories. <laughs> I'm blatant. Uh, I win by being blatant. But, um, one of the things that one of the things that I talked about very early on is every single person in the entirety of the world has a story to tell. Oh yeah, for sure, for sure. I mean look at it this way i'm looking at more of like a philosophical point of view now because that's what i do on a daily but every every day in itself is a story to be told i mean mm. yeah if you look at what you did yesterday you're retelling what you did yesterday in a sense that's a story because you you know you yourself are re-experience re-experiencing that particular set of events now that's a personal type of experience but looking at so you know looking at stories that you can't 
on that are not based on personal experiences like going back to harry potter jk rowling is not a witch or a wizard she made up this whole entire world herself yes for children to believe in magic which i think is absolutely fantastic but at the same time in a sense i think that it some of the underlying messages that harry goes through they could be personal experiences of jk because um jk if you if you don't know um i i'm guessing that you know but the audience themselves jk was severely depressed when she was writing the philosopher's stone or the sorcerer's stone if you're in america uh, she was she was writing that and she had severe writer's writer's block and she was severely de depressed doing it and then because she didn't think this was going to work and then it never it took her i think it was like four attempts to try and get it published and then oh, all of a sudden you know the huge phenomenon of literally the basis of a story of a of a whole genre itself it is is blown up worldwide i don't think a child in the whole entire world doesn't know who harry potter is there might be some but the, it, the, it's almost yeah. certainly very few and far between yeah. i mean what with what with the merchandise and the films and crimes of grindelwald which exactly. i haven't exactly. seen yet <laughs> I, I need to go see that Yes. Although apparently it's very confusing, but that's completely your point. Besides the point. <laughs> that is totally beside the point. But incidentally, I didn't actually know that JK um that JK was depressed when she was writing that. She was. So yeah, that's yeah. me. Um yeah. uh, I am learning along with you all. <laughs> <laughs> Fun but... facts with Zach. You're welcome. Yeah. <laughs> maybe that should be a thing fun facts with zach or fun facts with sarah <laughs> <laughs> or maybe not i don't know <laughs> uh, it's a we'll, we'll slip one in every podcast that's all right <sighs> yeah well uh, it's always one of those things yeah but but like <laughs> i say the main like the beginning point is that jk rowling that wasn't a personal experience for her but at the same yeah. time the way the way i put the 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 the, the bullet point I, I put the telling of an experience being personal or not i mean yeah. it could it could always intertwine i mean if you writers themselves i'm sure you do the same you put your own experiences in more of a fictional mm. sense definitely um and i think that's what I think that's a good idea to do so because Definitely. you're sharing a part of yourself with a character that you've created. Um, There's something. Sorry, go on. No, go on. I, I was finished. I was. <laughs> oh, okay. Um, There's something quite powerful about putting your experiences and yourself, whether they be in like true story form or fictional form or any kind of poetry or anything like that down on paper yeah um yeah. one thing i've learned um in long long time here on this blue ball of a pa planet um <laughs> <laughs> yes well this blue, um, spinny um, thing. Anyway. Hmm? this blue spinny thing yes this blue spinny thing that goes round and round and round and round and round and it amazingly doesn't make any of us dizzy <laughs> probably hopefully <laughs> um is that words have power oh yeah for uh, sure for sure words have the power to lift our spirits they have the power to make us imagine things they have the power to bring us joy but they also have the power to bring us despair they have the power to bring us down they have far more power than a lot of people give them credit for. oh yeah yeah totally there agree is, totally agree words a, can either can either uh make or break you in a sense they can mold 
certain beliefs or they can completely shatter them. Yeah. There is a verse in James, and yes, I know I keep going back to the Bible. Um, I, I'm i not going to ask for an apology. <laughs> <laughs> um, but there is a verse in James that says, there is life and death in the power of the And that is an incredibly true thing because you can you can tell the most amazing and fantastic stories and come up with all these different worlds and just oh that is too true too yeah. true it's and it's amazing all, exactly and it's all coming from someone's imagination yep but at the same time you can also make a, um forgive me for anybody who actually likes this series Though I don't think I know anybody who actually does, there are also um, there's also the there's also the chance that you could make something like Fifty Shades of Grey. Yeah. 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 All that kind of stuff. <laughs> As an yeah, example, yeah. this is not. Uh, please no. I have not read the book. I do not intend to read the book. I have not seen the film. I do not intend to see the film, and I really do not want to excruciate myself any further with talking about it. <laughs> Yeah. from what i've heard it's appalling yeah but that that, but, kind, that kind of thing i mean that's something that somebody's created in a yeah. sense so it's based in the real world but it's like you know it, it's something that happens every day but if you go to other other the other side of storytelling i've just come back to like terry pratchett and oh, yeah. the disc world now that is such an expansive universe and that's just one person that's created tons and tons of books that go alongside and co-inherent together within one world. That's just one person's imagination that can captivate generations and generations of people. And it's it all comes down to it again. It's I keep coming down to this, but it's all a fine line between going one way and and going another, depending on where your mind where your mind takes you. And I I think it all just depends on how or where you want to take the journey of your writing ability for being an author. There is some, the thought I just had, if one person can create effectively an entire world, yeah. how much more can we as humans with stories to tell create? I mean, even if it's just two people coming together and say for random random example doing a podcast about storytelling and yeah. about stories yeah. and about um like stories in so many different forms oh yeah for sure for sure Excuse me. how much of an impact can one like what if one person has that much impact on the world how much can we do when we work together? Exactly. And I, 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 it sounds really cliche, but I want to say the possibilities are endless. I mean, we're just talking about fantasy. We've not even began to we're think about like science sci fiction, sci fi, sci fi, or horror, horror, horror parallel universes that people create for their own selves and people like stan lee who just recently passed away he created oh, a whole <laughs> universe of characters for marvel yeah. he is he is the the, the co-creator of marvel yeah. and that will forever live on for yeah. forever um it, it's just just that just like like 
two people, Stan Lee and I can't remember the other person. I don't know if you know him. I don't no. know his name. <laughs> <laughs> I don't follow Marvel, I'm uh, sorry. No, no, it's it's just the fact that that those two people created something that again is loved by so many people. I mean, he's created so many characters that are beloved by millions. Yeah. It's it's crazy to think. I mean, in a sense, that's kind of like sci-fi because those powers will never, ever exist in a million well, years. You, you never know. For I mean, all you know, I might be... A, I might I might be a, a super. Uh, I might be an. Uh, I might be an X Men in disguise and have the power of levitation. Are you? No. <laughs> exactly. Fair point. But still, it would be amazing to have powers like that. Oh, it would. It would. It would be awesome. But would, um, I, I know that. I know that it's like. Like you were saying about Stanley, or um, to be fair, rest in peace. Um, yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. He was an amazing man, and I mean, the amount of cameos that he did in the MCU is just insane. Oh, yeah, he was in every single movie. Yep, and that's including things like X Men and Spider Man, and yeah, the yeah, yeah. ones that didn't have that weren't uh, that weren't controlled by Disney, but yeah, the, yeah, 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 the con. Yeah, well, we're going to talk about Disney at another point. Yes, yeah, um, yeah. Disney is a whole topic in and of itself when it comes to story. Oh, yeah. Sure. And yes, Disney does count as storytelling. Oh, totally agree. As a huge Disney <laughs> fan here and having a primarily based YouTube channel that yes. is solely based, is primarily based on Disney, I, I agree that Disney is a great form of storytelling. Yes. Um, how well they've done that storytelling over the years is something else to be another point. Oh yeah, point. for sure, for sure. But getting getting back to the point, I was vaguely trying to make if I can actually remember what the point was. <laughs> um, he created so many different characters, and I think. One of the things that um, I'd love to go into depth more, but may not necessarily, um, we may not be able to fit into like an hour or however long we end up doing this for. Yeah. But one of the things that's always kind of interested me is the history behind storytelling, because storytelling goes back effectively to the conception of the world. Oh, yeah, yeah, totally, totally. For as long for as long as there has been an earth with men on it, there has been forms of storytelling. Yeah. And even before men existed, technically, through things like archaeology and, gen um, and po well, not necessarily genealogy, but definitely through archaeology and the study of dinosaurs and the stuff, and like, through science, we have learnt about what happened before men existed. Yeah, 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 yeah. And that is something mind-boggling. From the moment that this world was created, there has been some form of storytelling. Yeah. And, and that's just... It, it's crazy to think about, and it's yeah. only getting more and more advanced with you know, however we continue to grow it, I suppose. But like yeah. you say, it's it's been around since the the, the, the conception of the world. And yep. it's just crazy to think about that something that can be so inspirational has been around for as long as time. So, I mean, if you look back, the earliest form of not necessarily written stories, but picture form story. Yeah. Is cave paintings. Cave, yeah, yeah, yeah. 
and that's like B, C, E, however many, and I still connect, not get used to the idea of B, C, E, because I'm still a, very much a B, C girl. Yeah. <laughs> but, but it's like, story has been around since the earth exists. Yeah. It has, it is a force to be reckoned with. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I think that is something to actually that is something i think that the that we should give the audience chance to think about yeah definitely oh yeah 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 totally yes. totally i don't i don't know about you but i think that that's a good place for us to i think so too a good place to end um, and a lot to think about people yes. of the audience um if you are watching on youtube please feel free to leave a comment down below on how storytelling has influenced your life if it has um yep. and please if you're watching anywhere else i hope you've enjoyed this um, yes this will be a once a month podcast um the next episode will be Oh, yes. Um, the next episode is going to be our favourite types of stories. Also known as, these are a few of my favourite things. <laughs> because that's just an awesome title. That is a very yeah. awesome title. Um, please feel free to like, comment and subscribe. Um, and please share this all over the internet because we love people to learn. We really want people, especially, uh, we really want people to be able to learn about stories and how awesome and amazing they are. Yes, yes, <laughs> we do. Yes, we do. Also, yeah. I will leave in the description down below the um, both well, our um, both our we'll leave, um, we'll both our YouTube links yeah down both there. our YouTube channels um Sarah's is more of a personal one and mine is pretty much like a whole bundle of everything going round that I love so if you want to go and check that out please feel free to uh, yeah. like Sarah said like and comment down below and subscribe uh, by clicking that big shiny red button and pressing that little notification bell. So you can stay up to date and be notified when the new podcast comes out. Um, I will try and find a way, Sarah, to put all of this on places where all podcasts are available. Uh, so you can get it on Spotify, uh, Podbean, and all of those lovely places. So you can listen to it on the go as well. So you're not just listening to it and on YouTube. Um, but that is Unless Sarah's got anything else left to say, I am I Zach, that. and thank oh, you yeah. so much for <laughs> joining us and listening yeah. in, and I hope you enjoyed it, and please um, tell your friends, and uh -huh. hopefully to yeah. see you next month. Yes, thank you very much. Have a lovely, lovely evening, people of the, um, people of the internet, and sleep tight.